Um, I'm Rebecca Early. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about um, a journey that I've been on since uh, Ezio began the project nearly two years ago. It's quite a personal journey. Um, I run a research centre and during this project work I've kind of decided to develop some ideas on my own and actually leave my team behind and kind of go out and um, turn my thoughts from product to people. So this is a textile journey from product to people, place to place. In my research centre, we deal with sustainable textile design strategy. We spent the last um, few years developing tools to help people design better products. Um, this project really marks a departure. We're very familiar with Ezio's work when he joined um, UAL, but we hadn't found a way to really apply it at that point. Um, enabling other people to design for themselves could mean textiles in lots of different social situations, but we hadn't really gone there ourselves. So we developed several, I developed several sketches, and I'm going to tell you these, about these postcards and about the key encounters on, on this journey. School children. I thought about resilience in terms of what my children will need to be in the future, what they'll need to know, what they'll need to do. And uh, in terms of textiles, I was particularly um, struck by how much waste they produce, uh, particularly in the school lost property department where parents will simply buy brand new clothing because they can't be bothered to find the lost object. It's, it's too cheap to buy a £2 school shirt from Tesco's than to actually care to mend um, a shirt and sew a button back on. So I developed projects with children that allowed us to play and to reuse clothing. I worked with students and staff. Here my PhD students, Bridget and Clara, and developed a masterclass with them for the MA students where we made tools to remake clothes for our own wardrobes. And with staff at Chelsea, Camberwell and Wimbledon, we came together to discuss the idea of re resilience and research for us and what that might mean given economic as well as environmental situations. And the self, probably the most difficult part of, of my journey, has been to um, look at the way in which we all need to be resilient too. But if we're working hard, if we're teachers, if we're parents, if we're living in this city, we actually have to care for ourselves first, otherwise we get sick, otherwise we can't deliver, otherwise we can't be there for others. So... In this time, I've been looking at yoga and mindfulness with my team, and we brought this into Cultures of Resilience and created a garment, a recycled garment, using marks from our body. I was writing a blog during this time, and on that blog I was sharing my personal insights into the work that I was doing and changing my own habits. So I undertook a year of buying nothing new no new clothes. And while I was writing about this, I was approached by Dr. Lucy Norris, an anthropologist um, from UCL, currently living in Berlin. She came over to meet me and we began talking. And we began to find that we had a lot in common, a lot of shared passions and ideas, and actually ideas about resilience. Bridget and I, Bridget Harvey, had been part of um, David Zombie event, um, and we had run a stall at the Market of Values called Mending for Others. We were mending people's socks while they actually told us about a breakup with a boyfriend. We found that as we mended and used materials with people, something really magical happens. I also decided that I needed to do something with the, the Calais situation. Um, that we were seeing in social media. I needed to sort of tie up my feelings with some actions. And so I became motivated to collect um, textiles and shoes um, to send down to Calais, working with different charities in London, collecting on campus, but also collecting at school gates. And I found this to be uh, important, but also incredibly difficult. The act of receiving goods to pass on to others was more complicated than I than I could really have thought. So through Lucy, we began to look at um, uh, Marcel Mauss's The Gift 
and um, in, particularly, in particular, quoting here from Mary Douglas's um, introduction, a gift that does nothing to enhance solidarity is a contradi contradiction. And I found that the collecting that I was doing, sometimes as people gave me things, they also gave me their opinions, their opinions about Calais, and those weren't pleasant. Bridget was mending in Hackney communities, and Lucy was volunteering in a Kleiderkammer in Germany. And I'm going to read now from Lucy's experience of that Kleiderkammer, because this really is the magical moment for us. I live in Berlin. I'm lucky. I have a home, a family, and, and I work. But I'm also an outsider, always tense, trying to understand these German cultures. What does Heimat really mean, and to whom? What could it mean for me? Struggling with the language, missing my friends and family in England every day. Children are our connectors, slipping effortlessly between English and German ways of being and belonging, understanding the codes, playing with the spaces in between, seeing what they can get away with and shaping a new way to be. When the refugees started arriving in Berlin, we all saw the long all-night queues for registration, the makeshift camps, and felt the impending winter. For me, volunteering was a way I thought I could be welcoming. The text goes on, and I'm, I've been given the finger by Nick. Um, so uh, I'm going to tell you in short that Lucy's experience was rather extreme. When we give these clothes, they do get handed out, some would what, haphazardly, and in very, very difficult, fraught situations. And actually what happens is that the people receiving the clothes have no facilities to wash them or care for them. So they get brought back to the Kleiderkammer and left outside, dirty and unwashed. And so this is a system that's broke. So we started talking about how to, to design a new system for these exchanges of goods, for this circulation of goods in our future circular economy, or rather circular culture. So we've been able to draw upon ideas from nomadic, a history of nomadic textiles, and other more recent floating inventions. And really, this um, I'm going to just end now with reading something out about um, the humanistic conscience. For Bridget, this humanistic conscience is what creates and sustains resilience, incorporating empathy, well-being, and a concern for the common good, along with an openness and willingness to learn about and from others. It is what has been driving us on this journey, finding a common theme in the migrant issue and in volunteering, but also in the ways we have chosen to do this. Our choices of actions have been both internal and external to our own comfort zones and have caused and we have embraced the self-questioning these actions have provoked. What we want to offer really is that actually the idea of mobility is incredibly important. For the, the, the community that we were working with, they're not settling and creating a place where they've landed or ended up in Berlin. This is a moment on their journey. And our job was to actually design a better way to support and bring them pleasure and comfort on that journey. So I'll just end with this. Um, the heterarchy is the surface of the sea. Much like the surge of a wave, it's what comes together at a particular time which creates strength and action. But these moments do not deplete the body of the sea. The power is there latently at all times. We are thinking about the abundancy of the flow of textiles and materials through a circular economy, or rather the circular culture, where the actions of giving and receiving are actually mutually beneficial and strengthen global bonds. Elastic living. Thank you, thank you.